Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation here today. My name is Birgit Gobel, and I'm a project management and outreach trainee at EuroClear. I would like to welcome you to the Sharing European Histories self-guided course. This course is part of the Sharing European Histories project, which is an initiative of EuroClear and of the Evans Foundation. Throughout the project, five teaching strategies have been developed by a team of teachers, researchers, and curriculum developers. They are currently available in nine different European languages, and five more translations will shortly follow. During this self-guided course, we will dive into each of these teaching strategies with local experts and teachers from across Europe to see how they have used these teaching strategies to develop lesson plans, which they then implement in the classroom. In this session, we will take a closer look into the teaching strategy on historical figures, which was developed by Gentian Deja. The official teaching strategy name is entitled Analyzing Historical Figures to Understand How and Why They Are Perceived Differently. And today we have Bistra here. Welcome, Bistra, Welcome. Um, who will show us how she used the strategy as inspiration to create her own lesson plan. Bistra Stoymanova is chair of the Bulgarian History Teachers Association and teacher trainer and lecturer at Sofia University. Her professional interests are in modern history, multi-perspectivity, multicultural education, and civic education. Very welcome to you, Vistra. Well, yes, thank you very much for inviting me for this, uh, I mean, webinar, yes. and especially this interesting uh, series of uh, self-guided course. So it's my pleasure. Thank you. I have here the presentation for today. As I mentioned, um, this here is part of the self-guided course. We have each of the five different teaching strategies. Uh, today is on historical figures. And we also have three live reflection sessions which accompany these recorded sessions. The one which goes into depth on uh, historical figures is on the 2nd of December 2021 and these will all be uploaded onto our YouTube channel to be watched afterwards as well as during. And now to go into the teaching strategy uh, for a little bit of context before we begin. Uh, the teaching strategy on historical figures focuses on key figures from the past, both recent or from ancient history. So it asks students to focus on one single figure and to analyze how they are perceived or remembered in different places. This strategy thus aims to encourage students to see beyond the dominant historical narratives of their country or community by looking at how various people perceive the same figure they are confronted with the fact that there are often multiple interpretations of history and of historical figures. The strategy will also emphasize that history is a constructive narrative, and it will also encourage students to approach dominant narratives, um, which are critically taught. Okay, that was a little bit of context. And then I will hand over the floor to Bistra, who is going to go through her lesson plan she has created to us. Bistra, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, as you can see, uh, the historical figure that I choose is uh, not a real political person, but is a writer, which by uh, different reasons became dissident. His name is Georgi Markov and uh, uh, he has a very interesting uh, life story in general. Uh, I, here you can see uh, the learning outcomes uh, for this lesson plan. Um, I used uh, Bulgarian history curriculum and uh, um, also uh, competences for democratic culture to uh, design all these learning uh, outcomes. Uh, they are in fact uh, based uh, on uh, 
knowledge and critical understanding of students to the complexity of the narratives for historical figures, especially concerning this period of communist regime. Uh, there is uh, uh, some uh, important uh, uh, skills to explain the mechanisms of control of this regime over the intelligentsia or intellectuals, uh, which is more used the word in English, but in Bulgarian language, we we'll use this one, intelligentsia. And uh, students have to give examples of dissident manifestations among the Bulgarian intellectuals. Of course, uh, there is a very interesting um, another outcome concerning uh, the attitudes toward uh, Georgi Markov and especially his work uh, as a political uh, opposition and uh, literature um, person writing uh, after the transition of uh, 1989. Of course, students have to analyze various types of historical sources and discover different uh, uh, viewpoints. After that, there is discuss and express their own opinion, but uh, they have to use uh, uh, concrete facts, not only uh, statement or assertions. And uh, a last one, it's develop teamwork skills because a lot of uh, uh, lesson it's based on working in small groups of students. Uh, probably uh, on the next uh, slide, uh, it's uh, quite uh, um, usual structure of uh, this uh, lesson plan. Uh, it's designed for a lesson of 80 minutes uh, because in Bulgaria we have usually 40 minutes uh, lesson and uh, it could be uh, two, uh, two, less, two hours, in fact, two school hours. Uh, there is uh, mainly three activities, uh, and uh, uh, here we can see uh, their, uh, their um, title. First activity is to uh, make students to uh, dealing with the historical context. Uh, that's why, for example, I put in lesson plan uh, this uh, uh, requirement, because this is for Bulgarian uh, students in the um, upper secondary school, they have to uh, get some knowledge about the period of uh, 1945, 1989 at least, so it's the communist regime in Bulgaria. Uh, for Dealing with this uh, first activity, uh, students uh, will use uh, one worksheet with uh, some sources uh, and they have to make a timeline. Uh, the, other, the second activity is uh, uh, concerning about the different viewpoints about uh, uh, Georgi Markov uh, himself. And here uh, students are helped by a worksheet uh, two. Uh, with a um, collection of different viewpoints uh, from different uh, time and origins like authors and a handout to fill in. I use the handout uh, who was uh, initially created uh, by the author of the strategy. Uh, so I make some a little, a very small adaptation. And the third activity is a discussion with the class and I uh, suggest to teachers to use uh, a very good strategy to involve all the class in the discussion uh, four corners. I explain a little bit uh, uh, in the lesson plan in methodological part, what is, uh, because I know that a lot of teacher knew this uh, strategy, but however, uh, some uh, recommendation to realize this in the classroom. So selection of sources was uh, for me quite difficult uh, task, in fact, because uh, uh, exploring uh, different, very uh, varied, uh, variety of uh, sources, uh, I now have a quite a lot collection of sources. But for the first worksheet, I wanted to make uh, something more um, different. 
And by pure coincidence, uh, I realized that during the last face-to-face uh, uh, -face annual conference of Euroclu in uh, Gdansk, Poland, which was in <laughs> 2019, in the hotel where was the conference, uh, there was a very interesting exhibition on person of uh, almost every Eastern Europe uh, uh, country uh, dissidents. And so here you can see the, um, the poster, like in a real exhibition of Georgi Marku from Bulgaria was chosen Georgi Marku. For me, it was surprising, but uh, I realized that uh, among the other representatives from other Eastern European countries, it's a really uh, interesting selection. Uh, on the second picture, so there is a quite a pictures uh, concerning uh, this period, especially some facts of the life of Georgi Markov. Uh, that's why I put for students uh, a chronology. It's a chronological table with main important uh, events of the life of Georgi Markov. And the other source uh, is uh, a documentary video in the footsteps of a revolution uh, made especially um, for the um, more than 30 years after the transition in Bulgaria, after 1989. And one of the uh, moments of this video uh, is concerning is dealing with uh, Georgi Markov and his importance like uh, uh, dissident. So uh, there is uh, uh, option to see also a video. Mm -hmm. And I stop here <laughs> for selection for the first workshop, mm -hmm. a worksheet. Uh, on the second, uh, uh, for the second worksheet, uh, I knew that they will be more difficult to choose uh, sources because here uh, it was important to make uh, a collection of different viewpoints points uh, and it's very interesting how uh, they change during time. Uh, Georgi Markov uh, immigrated in fact in 69 so on 70s there's an official from official Bulgarian uh, position it's uh, he's uh, mm, He's like a um, traitor like uh, a really uh, something uh, a criminal. Whoever before 69, it was a very successful writer, uh, play writer, scenario writer uh, in uh, uh, Bulgaria. So it was a very popular figure amongst cultural um, life of Sofia and Bulgaria, of course. So it's very interesting how they uh, things changed. Uh, after 1989, uh, there is again, uh, another um, turning of all these uh, uh, opinions on Georgi Markov, probably, which is very uh, curious, but he's more famous, not by his life, his very interesting work on um, dealing with communist regime in Bulgaria uh, as one of main authors of uh, uh, Radio Free Europe, BBC, Cultural Section, or Deutsche Welle, but because of his death. Uh, and uh, it was a very, I mean, it's a very still open case. There is no definitive uh, solution because there is no a definitive uh, criminal who was uh, trialed and judged. So it's uh, more uh, sources are dealing with this uh, part of his life, I'd say like this. And uh, all this about uh, the assassination at uh, London, I mean, it was on the Waterloo Bridge in the early in the morning, I mean, amongst a lot of people. He died several days after this um, uh, attempt uh, because of uh, the poison. Uh, Resin. Uh, it's a very, uh, how to say, uh, trademark of uh, uh, secret services of uh, Soviet Union. And as you can see, probably used by Bulgarian secret service of this period. 
Uh, so I, I was trying to make more um, different uh, viewpoints towards his uh, uh, personality, his work, and especially the evaluation of this uh, uh, historical figure uh, after 10, 20, 30, and more years. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, written sources that you can imagine. Uh, there was uh, uh, written sources, I mean, probably his fa most famous uh, uh, work now, uh, it's not uh, uh, his um, novels or uh, uh, plays, but uh, his uh, essays collected uh, in, um, in absentia reports of Bulgaria uh, or the Dochny reportages of Bulgaria. And of course, uh, uh, firstly, this book, uh, this collection of uh, uh, short text who was uh, uh, aired by Radio Free Europe uh, was collected later. Uh, they was uh, published uh, firstly in uh, English in uh, UK and after that in 1990, also in Bulgarian, Bulgarian languages. So Bulgarian people uh, was, uh, hearing his voice and his words uh, against the different uh, problems, issues on communist regime, but mainly concerning the freedom, freedom and the rights to be free and to have your um, rights. So uh, other, other elements of viewpoints, it's uh, about the monument of um, Georgi Markov. Uh, very long time, there was no monument. Um, and there was only this kind of plaque, you can see it. Um, it's uh, written from marble to Georgi Markov and all killed newsmen. So in some way it's uh, um, uh, interesting perspective to his work. Uh, so this is here for, uh, worksheet too, and of course, uh, students have to select and to group, classify all these viewpoints, at least in three categories, like uh, positive or pro Markov orientated uh, um, sources, like anti, uh, negative uh, representation of uh, him, and more or less neutral representation. Mm -hmm. And there is a handout that they have to fill in and make some more deeply and more critical understanding of different viewpoints. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is, yeah. <laughs> um, what we can do now is we can delve deeper into the sources which you selected because uh, there is a very interesting range from, as you were saying, uh, sources such as the monuments here pictured, uh, but also there is an excerpt from one of Georgi Markov's uh, books that he published, um, and then there's a short video clip. Uh, how did you make this selection, and how did you make sure that there was a very, or at least aimed to have um, a representative kind of representation of Georgi? Well, uh, you know, it's probably each uh, selection, it's uh, in some uh, uh, aspect quite subjective. Uh, I try uh, to follow some uh, more uh, example of uh, all this uh, um, uh, writings on Georgi Markov. It's not like in apologetical style of uh, his uh, uh, personality, but to make uh, uh, important accent on different uh, uh, activities. Of course, uh, as a person from, uh, I mean, he was not a political figure in the real uh, sense. He, um, I mean, it was uh, behind all this selection, it's all his interesting literature work, which is a really interesting, really, uh, I mean, uh, uh, useful to be um, dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I put uh, a source in, especially in the second worksheet, uh, it was opinion of a um, Bulgarian language and literature teacher, 
uh, and also um, a writer about why uh, Georgi Markov's, uh, at least uh, uh, in absentia reports, not part of uh, literature curriculum. And there was a very interesting reflection how today uh, his work is perceived. By the way, uh, in the same way, when there was uh, this idea to realize a monument, uh, this area, it's a square journalist uh, uh, code, and uh, it's, there was a small garden. And this area around the garden, it's very uh, interesting because there was uh, uh, very famous writers, actors, other artists were living there. And suddenly, uh, when there was uh, the decision of uh, Sofia municipality, because this is, was the decision where to put, uh, the statue was uh, um, financed by a private uh, person. You can see here on the picture, the immigrant from Bulgaria who was living mm -hmm. for a long uh, uh, period in United States. But however, it's, uh, I mean, it's only details. There was some kind of protest why Georgi Markov? Why not other famous mm -hmm. uh, writer or some painter or etc.? So it's a very interesting discussion how Georgi Markov is perceived today, mm -hmm. not before uh, the fall of the communism, but today how there is a very persistent stereotypes about his work and his uh, life, especially the period abroad. Uh, so I think um, there is some kind of even today, it could be in some way controversial yeah. uh, and could be uh, a lot of debate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not uh, by accident that I uh, uh, show this uh, plaque. Mm -hmm. uh, this plaque, it's uh, not only to Georgi Markov for, for the Killet Newsman. So it's, you know, each year today, there was a statistic about the Killet journalist in different uh, areas of the world. So in some way, in some way, his figure is um, corresponding of this. And especially, uh, there, probably there should be quite a lot of discussion about the value of his literature work. I'm not really a specialist here. I could not uh, make some judgment, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that his civic position his courageous uh, attitude and behavior till the end, there is something very um, important for uh, our, I mean, not only literature, but for our history also. Yeah. And by the way, uh, uh, by these reasons, I choose uh, um, Georgi Markov. In the beginning, when I started thinking which historical figure would be good to, uh, to, to take uh, for this strategy, I start to think more, you know, more normally, like, oh, something from politics, something with a lot of contradiction in his biography. But I realized that it will be quite a lot of, you know, uh, not so uh, emotional, probably involving mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for many students, uh, they didn't grow up with Georgi or yeah, they didn't have Georgi in their in their memories. So it's only ever a figure that they learn about. But if you take a look at the monuments alone, you can really see how the perception of uh, this figure has changed throughout time. And like you say, it stays it stays controversial and contested uh, if you take a look at the recent statue on the left. But yeah, fascinating. I think what we're going to do now is uh, move on to some more practical questions about um, the lesson plan, uh, how it would be implemented. Um, so do you think that the strategy and the lesson plan are easy to use, um, that they lend themselves well to a classroom setting? In fact, I think that uh, uh, the topic of this uh, strategy on the first look, it's quite, oh, what is the important here? But in fact, uh, on the second and after that, uh, when you make more precisely, there is a dangerous to start to, uh, you know, to make a very uh, brave uh, uh, talk about some historical figure. Mm -hmm. But important here, I think, this is the, I think the, um, the added value of this strategy is to make uh, uh, 
students to be their actors of their knowledge because they have deeply in the uh, context mm -hmm. and after that they have looking of the different points of view it's not only glorifying it could be even on the opposite side and i, I think it's a very uh, good uh, uh, example how um, historians as uh, science dealing with uh, uh, sources primary or secondary doesn't matter but they could select they could uh, combine they could analyze they could make uh, conclusions from this yeah yeah i think in that way um it offers a piece to the whole picture um and it's it's not a very commonly used strategy or an approach that many people take but when you look at the value of it then it's very worthwhile doing um, how much time would you say that it took to prepare this lesson plan, um, collecting the different sources, like you say, making uh, the worksheets, uh, but obviously that was based on the teaching strategy? Yes, in fact, I have a quite a clear structure of the lesson. Mm -hmm. The problem was uh, to make and to search for different sources. Yeah. And usually when you are start to look, because I prepare myself materials, uh, there is another option for teachers to use the ready uh, materials on mm -hmm. some topics and they exist uh, like on historiana on europeana so there is uh, already materials but because here was the local context uh, i i have really to look and uh, you know uh, there is some moments when you have the uh, the the feeling that you got uh, similar sources similar sources we were looking for something different so it took me quite probably several mm -hmm. days to to collect different sources that's mm -hmm. why I, I said that i have quite a lot of almost my personal folder on <laughs> georgi markov collections so it's yeah the the sources yeah. it's here is the crucial uh, yeah moment. and the sources is kind of what what the lesson plan is then based off of um but like you say then at the end of the day you have a lesson plan which covers two uh, two lessons and um it's kind of up to the teacher or to the historical figure that is chosen in what depth you go, you mentioned that it was difficult to sometimes find uh, specific local sources, um, but if you were to perhaps pick a, a more clear or a more well-researched um, political or historical or social figure, then maybe there are more sources readily available. Obviously, the more sources you have, the more perspectives, the better. So I think that uh, your research is definitely not for nothing. The folder that you have on him is <laughs> probably yeah. priceless. <laughs> when it's really funny, I could search for more even now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not never ending work in this uh, aspect. So, I mean, the day is never done. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. How would you... But I think it's uh, that's why you can find really interesting sources. Yeah. Uh, by different kinds, it's not only written; it could be uh, in every 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 aspect. That for sure. That for sure. How would you say that the sample lesson plan you created uh, supports your understanding of the strategy? Well, I think uh, it's uh, very well described in the strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for me, especially as a teacher trainer, the most valuable here, it's uh, of course the strategy very well explained, very well uh, structured, but also the examples. Because I know that uh, if you want to make something uh, different to mm -hmm. teachers, it's a very good idea to give them a real example from the beginning to the end. In this way, uh, uh, trainers should be really uh, sure that it's uh, quite a uh, uh, good explanation. They could discuss the examples after the teacher could adapt this example or develop their own. So, mm -hmm. I mean, especially not, I mean, there is a different uh, types of teachers a newcomer, uh, a really beginners. There is a teacher who are more or less uh, not so sure to use uh, their own um, materials. So there is some kind of uh, 
and has their, um, you know, their uh, really self-confidence that they could create, they could develop and realize this kind of lesson with students. Because here it's uh, uh, the crucial working with sources, develop skills and competencies of students to make a critical analyze of every, um, I mean, especially in history learning. Yeah. That's why there are so many discussion. <laughs> <Probably. Yeah. laughs> Definitely. Uh, when you actually were applying the strategy to your local context, I know we spoke a little bit about some of the challenges uh, when it comes to finding the resources, um, but did you encounter any other challenges, uh, perhaps in different levels of education or any other encounters? Uh, you know, uh, because this is a local uh, local context, I realized in some point that uh, because uh, every uh, the information of those sources is dealing with Bulgarian uh, mm. Bulgarian uh, uh, specificities, and I realized that why, especially uh, that there was two or three sources. Uh, there was a source. Uh, Georgi Markov instead of uh, Elin Pelin. So I have to explain to everybody out from Bulgaria who is Elin Pelin, yeah. because otherwise it was it's impossible to understand where is the paradox in this uh, document, in this source. And so, I mean, on this level there have, especially when uh, mm, it, it's possible to make with students not from Bulgaria, uh, to make some explanation. Mm -hmm. here to be more understandable mm -hmm. uh, because I know each literature uh, got their really very uh, good writers. It was on one level. The second level was uh, that uh, uh, in the local uh, context uh, there is a lot of things on political um, basis. I mean even of social cult cultural uh, framework of this society, which could be explained. And in some way, when I uh, constructed this chronology, I realized that if I don't stop to make another items, I could put uh, two or five pages of chronology, which is too mm -hmm. much uh, yeah. for this. Uh, but I mean, uh, um, but if uh, not for Bulgarian, probably if it's from, uh, to realize about the Georgi Markov, there could be a lot of explanation mm -hmm. uh, to understand, uh, uh, for example, for teachers from um, uh, Czech Republic or uh, Romania, for example, I give you an example from the former uh, Eastern Bloc countries. Mm -hmm. Even for them, it's, impo it's important to give uh, more information mm -hmm. about this uh, reality, about this reality. So uh, I think it's, uh, but I'm, I think it's, uh, it's some kind of challenge uh, to mm -hmm. make everything like this and to uh, make more interesting uh, the work uh, of history teachers. Yeah. Not only uh, with, uh, you know, historical figures as usual, for example, Stalin or something like this popular and famous. Yeah. In, yeah. But, but, but that is also the beauty of it, that you can take a historical figure, which is maybe not that well researched or known about yet, like this, this writer. Um, and then, like you say, it's very important to provide the context, especially, yeah, for example, even within a country, but also when you're moving outside of that country and taking someone else's, you know, uh, historical figure. And then at the same time, you have to present something which is still concise. So that does seem like a challenge. Um, but for the purposes of this lesson plan, I think it's safe to say that you over overcame it. Um, how would you say does this strategy compare to other strategies uh, which you've seen, um, which you may have developed as a teacher, teacher trainer? I think that uh, um one of the very important uh, uh, problem with uh, it's it's about uh, professional development of mm -hmm. uh, teachers so i mean speaking uh, it's that they should be really aware of so many strategies they could help their work and their efficacy with mm -hmm. students because usually and this is a very uh, important uh, uh, issues 
you you have to um, use uh, ready materials, but you have to use uh, your own materials. So to create such kind of materials, you have to uh, get some kind of a really strategies developed in the way that could be used by uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the teachers are quite busy people because they have a quite a lessons, but whoever, whoever, you could not uh, like uh, sources in your textbook. You have uh, to develop other competencies at your students because they're lacking something. Mm -hmm. So there is a chance and opportunity for them to use a lot of strategies to diversify their teaching. And I'm sure the learning of students will be more enjoyable and more <laughs> interesting for uh, young people because there is a two-way process. And now you've just uh, complemented the strategy greatly, but what opportunities would you say there are for adaptation or change or improvements? Because uh, no teaching strategy is of course ever 100% perfect. I mean, it's not a question of uh, perfection. Mm -hmm. It's more a question of your, uh, uh, your purposes uh, to use this strategy. Mm -hmm. And because there are some, um, some differences in your context, you could adapt, which is mean that its strategy is very universal. If you can take the whole thing and adapt only some elements according to your needs, uh, I mean, there could be methodological needs or they could be because of the age of students or et cetera, et cetera. So here it's, uh, I, mean, it's uh, I mean, it's a very good thing. It's a very difficult to work with uh, uh, materials which is impossible to be adapted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's I mean, very it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a very good quality here. Yeah. And we're slowly uh, coming to the end, uh, but I have one last question. Uh, what final tips or gems of advice would you like to offer teachers who want to use this strategy in their lessons? Well, I'm not sure that I have a list of tips, uh, uh, especially of this strategy. Uh, probably a lot of things that are uh, relevant uh, to other strategies uh, or to other uh, things that teachers do uh, would usually, but uh, uh, try to be um, dealing everything uh, with sources, mm -hmm. uh, try to find uh, interesting sources, uh, not very popular sources, not very often used sources. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, try to uh, make something different in your classroom. Uh, so it's uh, nothing uh, um, special if you use a new strategy. It could be not so very well from the first uh, try, but there is no uh, worry. Of, I mean, in this way, you have uh, got a lot of experience to try second, etc., etc. Et so I think it's uh, uh, don't be afraid to mm. try something new. No, just use it, I think. Yeah, just use it, yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank you so much, Bistro, for your presentation and also for answering these questions. That makes it all the more easy for teachers uh, to be able to then use the teaching strategy in their lesson. Um, and to our audience, it's good to know that you can find all this information on our YouTube channel. All the recorded sessions and the live reflection sessions will be published there. And Bistra's wonderful lesson plan and also the lesson plans of other local experts will also be uploaded. Um, you can also view any more links um, and see more information about the project on our project page on the Euroclear website. And for any questions or for more information, you can always reach out to us via the contact information provided. I'd like to thank you very much again and see you soon. Thank you. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye.